Hello, Honor Stats. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to deal with chapter 9.2, and I'm going to do a couple of examples uh, in this video uh, to give you everything that you need. Um, the first example that I'm doing, we're going to be testing all right, when sigma is known. Okay, so sigma known. So really, this is a chapter 9.1 question. And the only thing that's different is notice the data pieces. There's going to be a bunch of them. In fact, 40 of them. So as we go and I read this, I'll underline the important pieces that you need. Sunspots have been observed for many centuries. Records of sunspots from ancient Persian and Chinese astronomers go back thousands of years. Some archaeologists, archaeologi <laughs> archaeolo oh God, yep, think sunspot activity may somehow be related to prolonged periods of drought in the southwestern United States. Let X be a random variable representing the average number of sunspots observed in a four-week period. A random sample of 40, so now we know N is 40. Such periods from Spanish colonial times gave the following data. Okay, Now, if X bar is not given to you, then you're going to have to add all these numbers together and divide by 40. The sample mean is 47. Previous studies of sunspot activity during this period indicate that sigma, that is your population standard deviation, is 35. Remember, it's known. And it's thought for that it is thought that for thousands of years, the mean number of sunspots per four-week period was about 41. Remember, mu is 41. Sunspot activity above this level may or may not be linked to gradual, gradual climate change. And here's the question. Do the data indicate that the mean sunspot activity during the Spanish colonial period was higher than 41? So knowing that it's higher, we know that we're going to have a greater than problem. It's going to be a one-tail test, more specifically, a right-tail test. So... Oh, and we're using a level of significance of 0.05. So that's called a 5% level of significance. And that's used at the end when we do our comparison. So let's do our null hypothesis. Mu is equal to 41. So we're saying there's an average of 41 sunspots. The alternate hypothesis is mu is, remember higher than means greater than, greater than 41. Now we're going to find our test statistic Z. It's found by taking X bar minus mu dividing by sigma over the square root of N. So in our example, it's going to be the 47, take away the 41, divided by 35 over the square root of 40. Plugging that into our calculator, it yields 1.08. You should know two decimal places because Z scores go to two decimal places. Now, with that 1.08, we are going to graph it on a standard normal curve. I think it appears about right here. I'm going to call it 1.08. We are looking for the area to the right, to the greater than. But the problem is the chart only gives us area to the left. So if I look up 1.08, it yields 0.8599. Subtract that from 1, and you get the percentage you're looking for, 1401. This means that our p-value is the 1401, since this is a one-tail test. So where does the level of significance comes in? The 0.5. We know that 0.1401, which is 14.01%, is greater than the significance level of 05. And now we can do our sentences. Since the p-value of 0.1401 is large, now you can say is larger than the significant level or large is fine. We fail to reject H naught. Remember, when it's large, you fail to reject. 
So therefore, there is not sufficient evidence of sunspot activity higher than 41. Okay? So, 9.2, in a sense, at the beginning, is a reiteration of 9.1. So, everything I just did in this example, we did in chapter 9.1. So, now we're going to take a look at the new types of questions. The what the test statistic in the last example, notice it gave us the percentage of 1401. And this is where we're getting into the true 9.2 questions. And that is when our sigma is unknown. So these are going to be a little more difficult. Well, not difficult, just a little different. So looking at this example, the drug 6MP is used to treat leukemia. The following data represent the remission times in weeks for a random sample of 21 patients that use that particular drug. The sample mean is X bar, notice it's not given to you, with a sample standard deviation S, notice it's not given to you. Let X be a random variable represent the remission time in weeks for all patients using 6MP. Assume the X distribution is mound-shaped and symmetric, so we need that because there's only 21, which is less than 30, so they're kind of telling us that we can use the normal curve. A previously used drug treatment has a mean remission of 12.5 weeks, so we know our mu. And now our question, do the data indicate that the mean remission time of using that drug is different? Now notice it didn't say greater, it didn't say less, it didn't say fewer, it didn't say more, it said different. Okay, and this is the first time that we're going to use a significance level of 01, 0 0.01, which is called a 1% significance level. So the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to pull out your calculator and you're going to go through the keystrokes of finding X bar and S. So you're going to plug each of those numbers into stats and you're going to calculate. And we're going to find that X bar is 17.1. And the S come out to be 9.9999, so we're going to write 10.0, okay? So you have to have the ability to plug those data pieces in and find those two pieces of information. So let's do our hypotheses. H naught, the mu, is equal to 12.5 weeks. Our alter alternate hypothesis is different. That means not equal to 12.5 weeks. From here, we're going to find our test statistic, which this is different. The test statistic, when you do not know sigma and you're using S, is your T distribution. So our T distribution, we need a degree of freedom. Since there's 21 data pieces, take away one, our degree of freedom is 20. So here we go. Our T is going to be equal to X bar minus mu S over the square root of N. Okay. So X bar we found to be 17.1. The 12.5 is our mu. S we found out to be the 10.0. And there are 21 data pieces. This gives me 2.108. The reason I go to three decimal places is because the T distribution does go to three decimal places. Now, here's the problem. It gives us this test statistic. It gives us our percentages. So, ability. This is going to do the same thing. Okay. Now, we're going to look this up in the body of the paper. Understanding that not equal to is a two-tail test. Okay. You're not going to find 2.108. So we need to figure out where it falls in the degree of freedom of 20 and a two-tail test. So let me show you. So O2, O5. 
This was the 2.528. This was the 2.086. The number in question is 2.108. So it's in between. We don't know it exactly. We just know that the number we're looking for, the percentage we're looking for, is somewhere within this range, okay? Now, being that this number's closer to here, it's gonna be closer to 05. Um, I know the answer is 0.048 because the book tells us what it is, but you really don't need to know the exact. Just know it's somewhere between 02 and 05. So, since we're dealing with a 1%, point. 01 on the number line is here, 0.02 is here, and 0.05 is here. Your answer is somewhere in between, and 01 is over there. So, do you see that 01 is what? Smaller, so that means the number that you're looking for, even though you don't physically have it, right? I know it's 048. 048 is larger than your significance level, okay? So you're not gonna find it exactly. So since <clears throat> our p-value, now it's 048, but we don't need to write that. Since our p-value is larger than 01, we fail to reject H naught, okay? So please understand, for all of these questions, you are not gonna get the exact percentage. You are gonna know that the percentage is somewhere between an interval of two percentages. And then you look at your level of significance and see if your answer is larger or smaller than that, okay? Now, think about this real quick. If I change this one to an 05 significance level, just for the heck of it, that means that 05 is actually bigger, right? Because it can't equal this one, it's actually smaller, so everything would change, all right? So you have to be very careful. So let's get our last sentence. There is not enough evidence to show the average remission time taking 6MP would differ from 12.5 weeks, all right? So since we fail to reject, then it's not gonna differ from 12. It's probably gonna be just around 12.5 weeks if you take this particular drug. Talking about the question. All right, now one more example. Uh, again, sigma's not known. Archaeologists, I got it right this time, become excited when they find an anomaly in discovered artifacts. The anomaly may or may not indicate a new trading region or a new method of craftsmanship. Suppose the lengths of projectile points, arrowheads, at a certain archeological site have a mean length of 2.6. Right. Some reason a two and six went above the point. A random sample of 61, so we know our N, recently discovered uh, projectile points in adjacent cliff dwellings gave the following lengths. So we have a bunch of lengths. Now, I don't want you to plug these 61 in, these 61 data pieces. So I gave you X bar and I gave you S. Where X is a random variable that represents the length and all, pro all projectiles in the adjacent cliff dwelling sites. Do these data indicate that the mean length of projectile points in adjacent cliff, cliff dwellings is longer than 2.6? So longer than means greater than, greater than means one tail test or a right tail test. So we have all the information we need. So let's start by doing our hypotheses. 
H naught mu is equal to our 2.6 centimeters. H1 mu is greater than our 2.6 centimeters, right? Longer means greater. We're finding a T, why? Because sigma's not given and S was. And that is our 2.92, which is our X bar. Take away our mu, which is 2.6, divided by our sigma uh, or S, which is 0.85, divided by the square root of 61. Plugging this into our calculator, we get 2.940. Remember, three decimal places because our T distribution chart goes to three decimal places. Now, we're using a 1% significance level, right? That's the 0 0.01. So now our job is to look this up. Our degree of freedom is 61 take away 1, which is 60. So we're going to look for 2.940. Put that together. So the smallest percentage is 0005, and that related to the 3.460. The other percentage is 005, which relates to the 2660. Remember, our 2940 is in between, which means the desired percentage is somewhere between 0005 and 005. Well, think about it any number between that, and just so you guys know, it's 0034. So 0034, without a shadow of a doubt, is what? Is it less than or greater than the 01? It's less than the 01, which is your significance level, okay? So even though you don't know that, you do have an interval of where this number appears. Why? Because 2.940 is in between these two values. That means the percentage you're looking for is in between this guy and this guy. Well, if both of them are less than 01, then the number you're looking for is less than 01. So since the p-value is smaller than the O1, we reject H naught. Sorry about that. Make a better H. H naught. We reject H naught. So there is evidence to support the mean length. of arrowheads in that particular area is greater than 2.6 centimeters. All right, so if you reject the H naught, that means the alternate hypothesis of those arrowheads being greater than 2.6 centimeters is probably true, okay? So wrapping up 9.2. You will still have 9.1 questions, but we're going to concentrate 9.2 with the you're not given sigma. If you're not given sigma, you have to find S, X bar and S. You plug the numbers into your calculator and you do the appropriate keystrokes that will give you those two values. All right, we have a different formula to find our test statistic T and then... My number is 2.108. Up here is your two tail area. So you're gonna be looking at this row and you're gonna look at the row with 20, which is this row here. That 2.108 falls in between somewhere. I think, and I think you think, or you know, it falls right here. It falls between 2.086 and 2.528. So if we follow these two characters up, we follow them up, we see the two percentages, 
0.05 and 0.02. That means my answer lies somewhere between those two. Okay? So let me go back. 2.940. And understand this is a one-tail test. So we're up here in this row. And then we got to go down to 60, which is this row right here. 2.940 lies right here in between 2660 and 3460. If we follow those up, our two percentages is or are the 005. Oops, sorry, one more O. Nope, no, there's two. Two O's and one, two, three, five. So these two guys. All right, so let's go back. <clears throat> Coming back to this guy, you either have a one-tail test where you're going to use the top row or a two-tail test where you're going to use the second row. Come down here and find your degree of freedom. And then that number, that T value, is going to be somewhere in between two of these numbers. Okay, and then you go up to the top and it'll give you your appropriate percentages. Those are the percentages where your answer is gonna be in between. Even though you don't know the exact answer, you can relate that or compare it to either 01 or 05, okay? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is chapter 9.2.